Okay. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and welcome everyone to our Toolkit Tuesday. We have, our presenter today is Mark Porter. Mark is a real estate broker, investor, and national instructor with expertise in real estate technology, investing, and systems. He is the broker owner of Castle Hills Real Estate in Louisville, Texas. And when he is not helping others buy, sell, or invest, he is teaching agents around the country how to succeed in today's demanding high-tech market. Mark's animated and interactive teaching style will keep you engaged, learning, and having fun. Please Hi, help everybody. us. So welcome. I was, we were supposed to do something for uh, the uh, virtual session. Please help me welcome Mark, Mark Porter. Also, um, just a quick reminder, uh, please mute yourself so that way we're not interrupting Mark. But if you have a question, feel free to unmute yourself and, uh, and speak up, or you can also use the chat. Otherwise, Mark, I'm going to pass it over to you and, and let you go. Well, thank you, Emily. Thank you very much. Well, it's hard to be interactive. If you guys want to flip your, your video on, I, I'd love to see your smiling faces. Um, what I'd like to start out showing is just pulling out a few points that we have in the GRI program. And uh, this is probably uh, one of the favorites or people like, and that's use of video and use of video in an email message, just using video in your marketing and uh, what you see on the screen here is, is we got a YouTube video, but that YouTube video is embedded in our website, which is obviously Castle Hills Real Estate, but that YouTube video, so we put out a video at least once a month, most of the time, two, two times a month, and this is an example of the price is right, it's just one of our uh, typical video we would put out in informing or educating the public, and so we place the video or embed the video in our web page so we can give them a place to go to without distracting them. If we take them and put the video up on YouTube, yeah, that's that's great. But if I send you over there, I'll lose you. You'll be looking at 27 other videos and, and something unrelated or my competition before too long. So we take the video, we upload it to YouTube because they're the best host. And then once we have it uploaded to YouTube, we embed it in our web page. And here's an example of a blog post or a, a web page uh, in, in our website with the video on it. So once it's there too, we can also email it to people. So as a part of our every 20, 21 day process, we send out an email that it contains a video. And uh, here, here you see that video or that email. Now, the reality is there's no such thing as video inside of an email message. It's the illusion. You with me? So the illusion of video. So that's just a picture there that you see. Everybody looking at a, a YouTube video on the screen? Yeah, okay. So you see a picture or a screenshot that I cropped out and placed it in the email message and then mass emailed that. Um, it just happens to be hyperlinked, not back to YouTube, but back to our webpage. Is it making sense? Don't wanna take them to YouTube because you lose them, they'll be looking at other people's video, possibly your competitions. So what I want to do is show you a little bit of how to do some of these things. Um, and first thing is you go over to YouTube and go to your video and you see down there at the share button. And you've seen the share button. That's where you go share it to Facebook or sh share it with a friend or email it or text message. But you hit that share button at the bottom of your, your video on, on YouTube. And this is what comes up. And that first thing there, what do you see? You see embed, that's the one. That's the one you're gonna take over. The embed gives you that special hyperlink markup language, that hypertext that you can take over to your web page. And wherever you paste that special text, that will display the video. So I'm gonna hit embed. And here's the special text. And I'll just go down and, and click on copy. And now I've got that text in my clipboard. Does that make sense? Yeah, okay. Um, now I'm gonna head on over to my website. Now this is, a lot of the websites work the same. This is a real estate specific template based website that, uh, you know, that even NAR promoted this for a long time. It's from Playster. Uh, but that's where we have our web page. 
And then I'll just go log in. And once I log in, I'll get to the new page section. Some of your websites say new page. Some of your websites say new blog post, whichever. Just we're, we're making a new page. Um, and this is typical. Here you'll see a toolbar across the top on your, on your web editing program. And that first little click there, you see the chevron and the slash and the chevron. That that's the magic button. It's a it's a greater than slash less than or I guess I got it backwards, but you get the idea. Now some of your web editors will have uh, the word hypertext. And some of your web editors will have the button that's labeled uh, source. So it's one of these three items. It's either source, HTML, or uh, this little logo here, this uh, less than slash greater than. But what it does is it puts you in hypertext mode so you can paste that text and have it work. So I'm gonna click it. And now I'm in the HTML version of this of this page and I'm going to hit paste and remember what's going to go in there is that embed text back from YouTube hit paste that in there now when I hit update and goes back to normal view you'll see the video and there there it is so there's the video that lands inside the page and now I can do some fun stuff like I could send this message out and take people to the video without taking them to YouTube. The beauty though, uh, because we have YouTube channels and that's how we post a video, um, we're gonna get credit in two places as far as Google's concerned. We're gonna get credit for this, for this hit or it's called juicing Google. We're gonna get Google juice from YouTube and this web page. So the beauty is, is I take a bunch of people to this web, to my website and I have them click that video and I'm going to rise up the search engine results because, because of the popularity. Popularity is by far the most effective way to get and raise up in the search engine results. You do all this other special stuff and I'll, I'll talk about that in the two-day class this, you know, meta tags and keywords and all that stuff, but popularity is number one. That's what will give you the most juice. So you watch that video there and I'm going to get juiced on my YouTube channel because that's where the video originated and I'm going to get juiced on this page. Now that I have this post, I can do something like create, create a, an email message with the video in it like that. So how do you do that? Well, I'm going to go back here. And first thing I'm going to do is take a screenshot of what's on the screen. And if you're a PC user, that's just print screen. There's a button in the top right of your keyboard that's labeled print screen. You hit that. And then in your clipboard will now be this picture of whatever's on the screen. If you have a Mac, you hold down at the same time, command shift and three. And that will give you the... Uh, the ability to crop out that photo. So, but I'm on a PC, so I'm gonna just hit print screen, boom. And now I'm gonna go over to my favorite photo editing program and, and paste. You got it, we good? Now you see here, um, I'm in the editing program and I'm just gonna use this crop tool over here and I'm gonna draw a box right around this picture and crop it out. Is that you with me? I just crop that picture right out of there. And that way, you know, when I go over to my email message, I just have this picture. So now that I cropped it out there, I'm gonna hit copy. And then I'm gonna come over here to an email message and hit put, place my cursor down in the body here and hit paste. You know, the keystrokes for copy and paste, control C, control V. Uh, so I'm going to hit paste, or you can right click if you're more familiar with that. You can right click and hit paste. Uh, now I got this picture in here, but it's flat. It's dead. It's not hyperlinked yet. So I'm going to right click on the picture. And you see where it says link. 
And now I'm going to hyperlink this picture so you end up at my web page. So I'm going to hit link. And now I got this blank address here. So I have to go get the address. I'm going to go get the address back at my web page. So I'm going to head on over there and go up to the top and hit copy. Then I'm going to come back and go down to the bottom here and hit paste. Let's think about that a second. So I hyperlink the picture to my web page. So when somebody clicks the picture, they're going to end up on my website. And now, you know, the illusion is they, they put their cursor over the, the play button, but anywhere over the picture, it's hyperlinked. It's, it's going to take them back to my web page. Say, ooh. <laughs> Because that's pretty cool. You start doing that. Um, that's the free way to do it. You can buy like um, bonbon and and pay 40 to 60 bucks a month to do that. Or you can just do it yourself for free. And by the way, if you use a third party, who gets the Google juice? The third party instead of you. This is actually better for you to climb up in the search engine results. So next time somebody Googles something that's pertaining to real estate, they, they get a greater chance they get to your web page. All right. And then here's a, here's a couple of different variations of it. Like when we get a new listing, we'll, we'll put the new listing out there. So here you see a topic related, you know, like interests of buyers and sellers. That's how much, how we come up with those topics. When they ask us questions when we're out showing property or we're listing their house, we answer those questions via video like this. I mean, yeah, we answer the question on the spot too, but that's where the ideas come from that make popular videos. The buyers and the sellers asking us questions, that's how we create content. And there's two types of content. There's you know the question type content, and then there's just the promo type content. And this is a new listing or an open house uh, uh, invite. And that's another approach to using video in your email. And then probably this one, um, here at Netris, our MLS, we can't put the YouTube video inside the listing at all because they can't tell whether it's branded or not like they can with some of the like two or 360 or some of those other providers. Um, so what I'll do is I'll place that picture that I cropped as the last picture on every listing. Now, they can't hit the play button, but what hopefully the savvy realtor will see that picture and it'll tell them what? It'll tell them that there's a video out there somewhere that looks like a YouTube video. This is a little bit of a mistake because I got my logo on there. It's branded, but I, I can't normally do that. So I'll, I'll, I'll wipe that out, that, that logo. But the last picture in, in all our listings is the video of the YouTube crop. And that way people uh, know it's, they could go over to YouTube and find it. Then uh, this is probably, this is good for about three hits on our webpage every time we use it. And that's when you guys show one of our listings, you, we get an email message, just like you, uh, when you got a listing and they set up an appointment, you're going to get an email notification. Well, we reply to that email notification with, uh, with a video. And I can tell that about, they get three hits every time we do this. So let's say you're setting up the showing, meaning you clicked that link three times or you clicked it once and maybe you shared it with a buyer or two. So think about the juice. Every time you get a showing, you get about three new clicks, three new clicks on your webpage, three new clicks on your YouTube channel. So that's, that's just a way to really juice it. Any questions about that? I see a few people have their mics on. You were welcome to ask or stop me. That's a big one. We get a lot of juice off this. And then 
just a, something we do now. Uh, had some guy kind of get upset about seeing his, his house videoed his, you know, when we got the new listing. And so now I ask them every time before I make the video public. And this is an example of that. So it says, hey, Wynn, Marie, uh, we just completed the initial video production for your condo and posted it privately to you, YouTube for your review. Let me know if you approve of the public release of the marketing video. I don't know that you're going to get that much gruff now, but back, you know, five, 10 years ago, some people would freak out when they saw their video of their house, the inside of their house on YouTube. So this is my, me asking permission or avoiding a potential issue. All right, I'm gonna pause here for a moment and give you an opportunity to think about this a little bit and see, normally this produces questions, but I can't see most of your faces, so I can't see who has the, the question, but feel free to stop me or do you want me to go review something or what we just did? Everybody's cool and copacetic, they can do that? All right. Well, I'll tell you what, just in case you're not, I, I have a video of this, what I just taught you in YouTube. And let me put that in the chat window for you. So now if you go down to the bottom and you open up chat, you should see this link. It'll take you to, I'll, I guess I'll bring it up on the screen. It'll take you to YouTube and you'll see this this video reviewing what we just went through. Welcome to Mark Porter Live. So uh, you'd like to embed video into Microsoft Outlook. And our Got it. Was anybody, you able to see it in chat? Okay, very good. Okay, anybody else, any questions? quiet group. Uh, then I'm going to go on to the next section. This is um, a piece out of the GRI two-day class called One Marketing Effort, Ten Ways. And it's today's best practices of marketing yourself and promoting your real estate business. And the big picture concept is we make a marketing effort up. Maybe that's a new listing and it, it's a video on a new listing. Or set that aside a second, we got the second approach of marketing that we do, and that's the question base. Uh, if the sellers or buyers ask us a question, we think that might be applicable to other people, we want to create a new video and post that up there and have a collection or library of videos answering questions. And it, it gets us a lot of hits that we otherwise wouldn't get, and a lot of opportunities for, for appointments that we otherwise wouldn't get if we didn't do this. So it's called One Marketing Effort, 10 Ways. And think about it like this. The, the 10 ways, they aren't necessarily preferred methods of communication for you. Like maybe you don't use Instagram or you won't use Pinterest or LinkedIn, but we might. Um, there's people out there that do. It's just like way back when, when, when you said, uh, I'll never text. <laughs> And now you're texting all the time now because it's the consumer's preferred method of communication. It's not what you want. It's what they want. Oh, I got a question here. Kevin, are all these vi visible on your website? If I just go to your website. Yeah, you can go to Mark Porter Live uh, or just the YouTube channel either way. Um, and you can see a lot of videos. Or the examples from Castle Hills Real Estate, you can just go to castlehillsrealestate.com and you'll see uh, a ton of our videos right there. Yeah, please. Uh, thanks, Kevin. Current listings, answers to questions. Yes, they're both on castlehillsrealestate.com. Uh, okay, well, marketing one effort 10 ways means we're not necessarily worried about the fact that we don't use Twitter, but we're going to post to Twitter because it's the consumer's preferred method. And these consumers, they usually have one preferred method. Like there's a, there's a generation in Facebook. And there's also a different generation, maybe the millennials in Insta, Instagram, right? 
So it's not necessarily jiving with me that I want to go to Instagram all the time, but it doesn't matter what I like. It matters what the consumer likes. So I'm going to create an, uh, like a, an advertisement or a piece of a marketing piece, and I'm going to put it out there in these 10 different ways. And the first way you see there is face to face. Now, for many years, that was our primary or most effective method of building rapport with our sphere of influence was getting face to face. You know, that's a little crazy now with COVID, but um, it's still your most preferred method. Uh, it's just probably going to be with Zoom or, or a phone call now. And then the second item here you see is postcard. Let me let me go right through the detail. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Hold on a sec. Let me bounce back here. So face to face, like when I first got in the real estate business, uh, example is my broker, Jewel. He said, go over to the Chamber of Commerce meetings every Thursday night. And it worked. It really did. We exchanged business cards. You meet other people in different businesses. And, and it worked really well, especially with me being so new in the, in the business. Then uh, I came up with postcards. Um, I went to a state convention meeting and state convention meeting. Pat Zabie was talking and he told us to use postcards. It worked. We're currently at $50. Me, uh, me there we go. Um, and here's an example of uh, our consistent postcard. One side is this, our logo, um, our brand. And then the other side is the different topics that come out every week or every 21 days. Uh, like this one, don't make common mistakes when selling your home. So here's the postcard version of that marketing effort, which is usually just a few bullet points. And, you know, there's a lot of people that never see this. My son's generation, they go out to the mailbox every two weeks and they never see my postcards. That generation. So it's not like they're overwhelmed with seeing me 10 different ways. They see me one way. And my son's generation sees me via Instagram. Uh, really common. But the seniors see me, they post, they always comment, wow, I got another postcard. You guys are really busy. And it works, you know. It gets a message across between the, the uh, mailbox and the trash can. It's branding, you know, it's marketing one-on-one. Um, and then we do the, the email. And this one, I got to stop and talk about this one a little bit. We, we get together with uh, Design Time and sponsor an event every quarter in our subdivision, in our primary area that we work. And what we do is we invite an artist to come in. They display their work and we uh, chat with the people and invite everybody. And we sponsor some hors d'oeuvres and refreshments. And we met this this couple about two years ago at, at one of these gallery nights and they bought or they built a $3 million house that we met them there. So talk about what well, was our biggest sale we've ever had. I mean, normally we're in the 750 range, a three, 350 to 750. And this was just amazing that we got that kind of uh, return on our investment. So we involve ourselves in the community a lot and sponsor things and uh, interact with the businesses here. And it really helps us gain a lot of traction in this marketplace. It makes us hyper local. Well, here's that same post. You know, this is the email version of the post. And then here's the uh, Facebook version of the post. So one marketing effort multiple ways. Then here's the email version of this post, the price is right. And we saw how to do that. And then we link that back to our web page, which the web page is kind of the center point. It's your identity to Google. Google sees, 
It's the way to tie everything together. Google says, this is your home base, your web page. And then you have these presence out here in these remote locations like Instagram and Twitter. Uh, but this is your home. This is how they identify you and bring you up on the search engine results. This is over at Castle Hills Real Estate. So we've got a couple of different versions of Facebook. We've got our personal page that you're very familiar with. Then we have our official real estate page, which is this one's Castle Hills Real Estate. Yours personally might be, uh, you know, your first name, last name, realtor. And that would be your, your uh, Facebook business page. And then the third one is the community page. So Castle Hills Living. This is a, an area of about 4,800 houses referred to Cat, as Castle Hills. And um, we have a page dedicated to that, but it's more of a, uh, hey, what's going on this weekend? Oh, who's having the fun run on the 4th of July? Um, is there another uh, wine and dine art experience over at, uh, at Divine Art? You know, this is where people go to see what's going on. And this is, this is the key. This, this is how major real estate agents are taking over little local markets by being hyper local. So three ways you're promoting Facebook. And get this, when somebody clicks this, I'm getting credit in all these different places. So this is at Castle Hills Living's Facebook page. Somebody hits play there, and who's going to get credit? You see that this is a share from CastleHillsRealEstate.com. So I'm getting credit in Facebook probably twice. Castle Hills Living, Castle Hills Real Estate Facebook, CastleHillsRealEstate.com, and what's that fourth one? YouTube channel. You really juice in Google by doing this. And then here's my personal page. I'll share that from the Castle Hills real estate page on my personal page because I'll, more people will see it from your personal page than anywhere else. Your business page doesn't get as many hits as your personal page. So this is, I mean, here's, here's the version of over at Twitter. And do you see the consistency in branding? The postcard looks like the Twitter page. The Twitter page looks like the Facebook page. Consistency in branding. Then here's how it looks over at LinkedIn. Pinterest. Instagram. Oh, Connie. Connie says, so good, but I have another appointment. Oh, <laughs> she has another appointment. She'll be back. We need to use these techniques to advertise, advertise toolkit Tuesdays. That's a great idea. We'll help uh, Emily and Ryan get that taken care of, and we'll, we'll assist them right along. There's Instagram. And so here you see the 10 different ways. Well, they didn't come up by accident. They, I mean, these are these are the hot places that different generations hang out, different profiles hang out. Like who hangs out at LinkedIn? Corporate America. So if you don't have a presence over at LinkedIn, people in corporate America, that's a place they go look up before they do business with a business person. They look them up on LinkedIn and see how well they're connected there. And if you got a lot of hits, that can help you build that rapport. Well, this isn't random. This is starting. Um, well, first, let's say this, this is Alexa. This is a website, not the, the local speaker in your house. But Alexa is a company that tracks websites across the world and who has the best uh, hits, the most popular, the most time on site, meaning if somebody goes to your webpage, do they hang out there? Do they click other things while they're at your webpage? And that's the sign of a good website if they do. Um, well, the number one website out there is Google. So we're catering to Google by having a presence on a webpage. And that's our identity. 
So then second is YouTube. That's the second most popular website in the world. I mean, that's the new search engine is YouTube. Well, Google owns YouTube. They want to see you get good hits there. And you got good hits on Google.com and good hits at YouTube. And you're going to climb up the search engine results when somebody's looking for, I don't know, a question related to real estate or a house in Castle Hills. And then Facebook. So what this is doing is establishing your priority in which you get, where you get a presence first, second, and third. So obviously, primarily, we want to cater to Google. So we create a web page. And then once I got my web page up and running, then I probably want to create a channel over at YouTube. Here is your priority list on where you should go first, second, and third. This doesn't happen in a year. It doesn't happen, you know, it's been, this is 10 years where we can go to 10 different places. But now it's just standard operating procedure. We come up with a marketing idea and boom, it goes out 10 different ways. Now it's easy. At first it was tough. So get your webpage rolling and create a YouTube channel. And then what's the third most popular website in the world? Facebook. And we won't address Amazon because we don't, you know, we're not selling a product. <laughs> Maybe yet. <laughs> and then we'll skip Wikipedia, Reddit, and then we get to Twitter. So that's your, your next priority. Yahoo is not going to be a place for us, but LinkedIn. So what I'm trying to tell you is there's, there's a method to this madness in, in your prioritization of implementation. You know, go where it's popular. It, the, uh, the E there, Explorer, represents your web page. Then Facebook represents three pages, local market page, your real estate business page, and your personal page, your YouTube channel, and so on. So I don't expect it to implement all this in a day, but maybe, you know, get through the next one. Instagram, then Craigslist. I mean, that's worth some effort. There you go. Now, you saw a consistency in branding across all those different pages. What you want to do is have somebody or a graphic artist take care of your web page and, and you establish your brand or your look on your web page. And once you've established that brand or look, you want that established across all those nine other places. And here's how we did it. It cost me $57.75 to have somebody look at my website and create all the header pages on those nine other websites. Because yeah, they're different sizes, different methods, different approaches, but they all looked the same. And you want that consistency in branding too. I would recommend that you go over to Fiverr and you post this little task and multiple people will bid on it and you can read their reviews and pick somebody to create those headers for all those other websites. Now, that would take me two weeks to do that by myself, but here it took uh, 24 hours and 57 bucks. Consider Fiverr. And basically, GRI technology is like two days of this stuff. Two days of how to do what you should do uh, tech-wise in real estate. Now, I'm going to pause once again, because right now, I usually I, I'm, I'm, I'm about 15 minutes of talking between each other and questions answered. Um, so I'm going to give you an opportunity, but I'm, I'm, I'm giving you a sales pitch for a class here coming up. And that class is March 2nd and 3rd nine to five, two days of this type of stuff that I want to share with you and teach you how to, how to do a little better in real estate.
questions? Shy group, boy, when you're in front of me in class, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull it out of you. <laughs> I guess I have a quick question for you, yeah, Mark. So then, would you? Much. I know that um, that this kind of this question kind of was a little bit along the lines of Kevin's. But then, do you hide the videos of the homes then after they've sold on your YouTube channel? Um, no, I edit the title. Okay. And what I just add the word "sold" to the beginning of the title, so the title might be. Um, um, 1101 Morgan Le Fay Lane, Louisville, Texas, Castle Hills Subdivision, North Dallas. And now once I sell that property, I just add the word sold to the front. So you keep those numbers. So you keep that, those hits, because you don't want to just delete it or hide it. Yeah. Okay. Oh, and Emily shared with us, uh, she's recorded this, so she'll send it to you so you can see this this class, what we just did for the last hour uh, over and over again, if you need to. Otherwise, I'd, I'd love to see you guys at the GRI class. Any other questions? Oh, but since that house has a new owner, out, aren't you out of compliance? Um, that, uh, that's not a, a question for me. I don't know how Nebraska looks at it. Texas is okay with me just putting sold there. And I've, I've had once in a while, I'll have a, an agent call me and say, Hey, you put up this video about six years ago. The house doesn't really look like that anymore. Can you hide it? And I do. You know, if anybody asks, I'm, I'm happy to hide it, but uh, if I can, I want to keep that juice up there. So you might ask your broker about it, it, it see if just putting the word sold is compliant or not. Good question. Thanks, Carla. Anybody else? Emily, Ryan, you guys got anything? Any questions or uh, announcements? Nothing here. Okay. I think it's an awesome, this is awesome content though. I look forward to the class. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Well, we'll see you guys on March 2nd and 3rd up in, uh, I guess we're in Omaha. Yeah, Omaha at the Omaha Board of Realtors. I'm looking forward to it too. Let me know if you have any questions. Um, oh, here, let me paste my, uh, my business card in here. And I guess I got a link to a couple of videos too, but I'll put this in the chat window. Uh, let's see everyone and paste. So in the chat window, you see three hyperlinks. Um, one is the uh, example of one of our videos at YouTube, and uh, another is how to do the embedding, and then the third one is a V card, a VCF card. It's kind of like a ICS file. You know, you have a calendar file. This is a business card file. So whatever contact manager you're using that normally allows a VCF to be added to it. If you open it up, you'll just see a contact record, name, address, phone number, picture, and and bio. You're welcome to check that out and that's another thing i'll teach you how to do is how to share your business card electronically like that all right if there aren't any other questions we're going to call it a day thanks so much mark this is yeah like ryan said this is great info i'll hang out for great a bit teacher. so if you if you're shy and you want to just ask me a question i'll be here mm -hmm. otherwise thanks folks good to have you And it was a quiet group. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's technology. You know, if if you're in the class, usually you're a little, a little shy. Yeah. <laughs> that's all right. When I get you face to face, though, we're going to pull <laughs> it out of you. <laughs> well, thanks, guys. I really appreciate you having me. And, and especially thank you for having me for GRI. I, I love to teach and, and love to sell real estate. So kind of win-win. Oh, wait, will you send the video to everyone that's here? I think so, Emily, is that right? Yep, yes, yep, yep. I will plan on sending it to everyone. Thanks, Kevin, yes.
Awesome, guys. Well, thank you so much, Mark. Appreciate it. Thanks, Emily, for putting this all together. Yeah, here, here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sign off, but we will see you soon in Omaha. Thanks, Ryan. Got it. Uh, let's see. Call after 1130. Discuss serious investment. Oh, hey, Mike. Yeah, yeah. You, you can give me a call. And every month, email. Yeah, yeah, we got it. We're good. All right, folks. Thank you. Thanks, Emily. Good to see you. Yeah. They, oh, I, yeah, of course. Thank you so much. Christy did want me to tell you hi. She, she gave me a quick call right in the middle. It's like, dude, what do you think I'm doing? <laughs> and, and great <laughs> news. Tell you hi. <laughs> great news about Christy. She's doing quite well, I hear. And yep. Yeah. Uh, I'm ecstatic. And yeah. I'll, I'll send her another case of Michelob. <laughs> That'd be very thoughtful. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Emily. Yep. Thanks so much.